Master Hunter World Iceborne is a wonderful gaming experience with a whole host of content that Capcom has supported over the past few years, but now we have access to all the game has to offer and we can work towards the best builds possible in the game. So I'm Darkblade with the best of the best builds for the Insect Glaive in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now when I say a best of the best build, I mean a build or set that is constructed from some of the rarest armor, weaponry and jewels in the game. This gives hunters some of the strongest sets possible. For this series I'll be featuring 4 builds for each of the various weapons in the game which should cater to a variety of playstyles. When it comes to the Insect Glaive, it's a strong weapon, being able to make use of airborne attacks, it can stay out of reach of monster attacks while still being able to deal damage to them. Most of the builds I use for the Insect Glaive are DPS focused, with slight variations and set bonuses. So the first build is the best of the best raw attack Insect Glaive build. This build focuses on having high raw attack so it can be taken against pretty much any monster in the game. On top of that because we are using the Fatalis armor with this build it means we have a ton of quality of life and defensive options. So for this build you'll need the Bracadian Helm Beta, the Dragon Hide Alpha, the Dragon Claws Beta, the Dragon Barbs Beta, Dragon Feet Beta and the Challenge to Charm 5. For my weapon I'm using the True Fatalis Dias which has a health regen augmentation and attack increase augmentation. And then the specialist tools are down to personal preference, but I've gone for temporal and rock steady mantles. Now, when it comes to the jewels, you've got a ton to play around with. Of course, when it comes to the jewels, if you don't have what's shown here, you can always replace the jewels with what you have available in your own collection. Anyway, first of all, I've gone for attack jewels for the attack boost skill, fortitude jewel for the fortify skill, expert jewels for critical eye, shaver jewels for the clutch claw boost skill, challenger jewels to max out agitator, evasion jewels to max out evade window, critical jewels for the crit boost skill, protection jewels for divine blessing, a flight jewel for the airborne skill, and handicraft jewels for some extra sharpness. As for the jewels on the mantles, I've simply gone for dragon jewels for the dragon attack skill. So, if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with 200 health and 200 stamina, regardless of if you've taken consumables or not. You'll have a raw attack of 1228, with maxed out purple sharpness. you have 15% base affinity, which can be 85% when you take into account both weakness exploit and the buff from agitator. You have a dragon rating of 120 with high elder seal, and you have spirit and strength boost kinset bonuses. And you have a very strong defense of 1111 that is strong against water and thunder, a little bit weak to fire and ice, but unfortunately very weak to dragon. Now when it comes to the skills, first of all you have attack boost at level 7. Attack boost is a skill that increases the raw damage and attack value of build, and at level 4 or above it also grants us a bonus 5% extra affinity. I know attack boost is this high because of the attack jewels we are using, but if you can get attack boost to at least level 4 you should be fine. You also have Critical Eye at level 7, increasing the base affinity of this build. You have Agitator at level 7, which is a buff that kicks in whenever a monster becomes enraged. When this happens, you'll gain increased raw attack and base affinity. And with Monster Hunter World Iceborne, it is easy to control when a monster becomes enraged, thanks to the whole flinch shot mechanic. It means that this buff should be active for the majority of a hunt. You also have Handicraft level 5, increasing the sharpness of this build. We have Evade Window at level 5, increasing our invincibility frames when we perform dodges and evades and rolls and such. You have Divine Blessing at level 5, which gives us a chance at taking reduced damage should we take a hit from a monster. So should we mess up the Evade and the Evade Window skill not work, then Divine Blessing will hopefully save us from being carted. You also have Critical Boost at level 3. Critical Boost is a skill that allows our hits to deal increased damage should they crit a monster. However, this increase in damage is only applied to the raw portion of an attack, not the elemental or ailment portion. You'll also have Weakness Exploit at level 3, which is a skill that increases our affinity should we be attacking monster weak points. And should these weak points be tenderized through Clutch Claw attacks first, this increase to our affinity is even greater. Weakness Exploit at level 3 can potentially provide us an extra bonus 50% affinity. You'll also have Airborne at level 1, increasing our airborne attacks. You have Fortify at level 1, a useful buff for difficult hunts in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Whenever we cut, faint and come back, we'll come back with increased raw attack and defense. You'll also have Clutch Claw Boost at level 1, which allows our Clutch Claw attacks to tenderize monster body parts in just one hit instead of two. An essential skill for the Insect Glaive in my opinion. And then finally when you're wearing your mantles, you'll have Dragon Attack at level 2, increasing the Dragon damage of this build slightly. Finally when it comes to the set bonus, you'll have the Fatalis Legend. For wearing two pieces of the Fatalis armor, you'll have the Inheritance set bonus. This is a skill that allows us to break the level cap on certain skills. For this build it applies to two skills, it allows us to get the Agitator skill from level 5 to level 7, increasing our DPS, and it allows us to increase the Divine Blessing skill from level 3 to level 5, potentially increasing our defense. And then for wearing four pieces of the Fatalis armor, you'll have the Transcendent set bonus. This is a skill that provides us two buffs. 
Firstly, it grants us 200 health and 200 stamina, regardless of skills or consumables, so we don't have to use the likes of health boost or use ancient or max potions at the start of a hunt. Having 200 stamina also means that we can stay airborne for longer. And on top of that, it also grants us the true razor sharp skill, which severely reduces our sharpness loss when we're attacking a monster. So there you have it. As you can see, this is a very strong raw attack build for the Insect Glaive. It also has pretty much all the essential skills that you could want with the Insect Glaive, bar a few quality of life skills. But every build in Monster Hunter World Iceborne has pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is its raw damage output. The DPS orientated skills this build has means that you can take on pretty much any monster in the game, regardless of their elemental or element resistances, quite effectively and efficiently. On top of that, this build has a fair few defensive options, namely Evade Window and Divine Blessing, which should help keep you alive in the more difficult hunts. And finally for the pros is the Fatalis set bonus itself, which gives us increased defense, quality of life and offense. But of course every build out there has pros and cons. One of the biggest cons for this build is it does lack when it comes to quality of life skills. The Insect Glaive definitely benefits from the skills like Power Prolonger, which helps keep your kin set bonuses active for longer periods, but it is only really a minor con. And the other con is unfortunately this is a jewel heavy build, requiring some of the rarest jewels in the game to make work. But these are supposed to be the best of the best builds possible in the game, so they are going to feature some of the rarest jewels and armor possible. But if you're looking for a build to aim for, one of the strongest in the game for the Insect Glaive, this is one to get. It can take on any monster in the game effectively and efficiently, and is one of the apex builds for the high flying weapon. Which brings us on to the next build, which is the best of the best elemental Insect Glaive build. This build is all about dealing elemental damage to a monster. This means that you can bring them down quickly so long as you're countering them with the correct elements. Again, this is a DPS focused build. So for this build you'll need the Safi Crested Crown Beta, the Safi Crested Chest Alpha, Safi Crested Van Braces Beta, Safi Crested Belt Beta and Safi Crested Boots Beta. I'm also using a Blaze Charm 5. This is because we're using a fire weapon. Of course, if you were using a different weapon with a different element, you would replace the Blaze Charm to match whatever new element you were using. And for my weapon I'm using the Kiar Glaive King. This has a health regen augmentation and then elemental up augmentation. As for the specialist tools, as always, they're down to personal preference. So I've gone for temporal and rocksteady mantles. Now, when it comes to the jewels, you've got a fair few to play around with. So I've gone for further jewels for the resentment skill, evasion jewels for evade window, a blaze jewel to max out the fire attack of this build. Of course, like I said, much like the blaze charm, if you were using a different weapon with a different element, you would replace the blaze jewel to match whatever new element you were using. I've then gone for Vitality Jewels for Health Boost, Shaver Jewel for Clutch Claw Boost, Tenderizer Jewels for Weakness Exploit, a Sharp Jewel for Protective Polish, and a Flight Jewel for the Airborne Skill. As for the Jewels on the Mantles, I've gone for Expert and Protection Jewels. So if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with 150 Health, 100 Stamina, which would be 200 Health and 150 Stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You'll have a raw attack of 918, this can be higher when the Resentment skill is active. You have a little bit of white sharpness unfortunately, with 60% base affinity which can easily be 100%, in fact it's pretty much over 100% when you take into account weakness exploit. You also have a fire rating of 890, please note that the fire rating and base affinity shown here are with the true Dragon Vein Awakening buff in effect. You also have the Sever Boost Kinsect bonus and you have a strong defense of 1101 that is strong against every element, especially fire but unfortunately slightly weak to dragon. Now when it comes to the skills, first of all you have fire attack at level 6. Fire attack is a skill that increases the fire rating and thus the fire damage of a build. Of course if you were using a different weapon with a different element, you would replace fire attack to match whatever new element you were using. You have resentment at level 5. Resentment is a skill that kicks in whenever you have a red portion of health on your health bar. When this happens it grants us increased raw attack. This works well in unison with the true dragon vein awakening health drain which we'll talk about in a moment. You have evade window at level 5, health boost at level 3, health boost is a skill that allows our health to get to that maximum of 200. You have blight resistance at level 3, a byproduct of the armor we're using, it basically makes us immune to any elemental blights in the game. Next up is critical boost at level 3, you also have weakness exploit at level 3, airborne at level 1, protective polish at level 1. Protective polish is a useful skill in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, especially if you're using a weapon with a small amount of white or purple sharpness. Basically every time you sharpen your weapon, you'll put a protective coating over your sharpness gauge preventing any sharpness loss for a small duration of time. Next up is Critical Element at level 1. Critical Element where it's much like Critical Boost in that when you crit a monster, your attacks will deal increased elemental damage. You'll also have Clutch Claw Boost level 1 and finally when you're wearing your mantles you'll either have Critical Eye at level 2 or Divine Blessing at level 2. Finally for the set bonus you'll have the Safi Jeeva Seal True Dragon Vein Awakening. 
This is a strong set bonus, but it has a risk reward factor. First of all, when you have your weapon drawn, you'll gain increased base affinity and elemental rating, thus elemental damage. But there is a downside to this. With each swing of the weapon, regardless of if you hit a monster or not, you'll drain your health, leaving a portion of red health on your health bar. This red health in turn will activate the resentment buff which we talked about earlier. But should this red health build up, and you take a hit from a monster, there's a chance that you could cart. Thus, this is where the risk reward factor comes into play. But should you be accurate with your attacks and you continuously attack a monster, then the true Dragon Vein Awakening after a certain number of hits will initiate a heal, healing you for the health it drained. So there we have it. If you like to use elemental builds with the Insect Glaive, I'd strongly recommend this one. The Safi Jiva armor, whilst having a risk reward factor, is fun to use and allows you to deal out some strong elemental damage while having a lot of useful skills built into it. But of course there are pros and cons to every build. The biggest pro for this build is its elemental damage output, able to take down monsters quickly so long as you're countering them with the correct element. On top of that, this build has useful quality of life and defensive skills, from evade window, health boost, blight resistance and more. These will help make the hunt feel easier than it is. And then finally for the pros is the true Dragon Vein Awakening set bonus, which provides us increased affinity and elemental damage for simply having our weapon drawn. But of course there are cons. The biggest con for this build is the true Dragon Vein Awakening health drain, which can leave you at risk and you need to be mindful of. And the other con is unfortunately a lot of the Kiar weapons in Monster Hunter World Iceborne only have a small amount of white sharpness which can be an issue, thus you need to take skills like protective polish to counter this slightly. But like I said, if you're looking for a build to take down monsters quickly and you like to use elemental weapons in the game, I'd strongly recommend this build. The armor set has a lot of skills built into it, so you don't need a huge jewel collection. And for me personally, the risk reward factor is a small price to pay for the damage increase it gives us. Which brings us on to the third build, which is normally a niche or quirky build, which for the Insect Glaive is the best of the best Master's Touch Insect Glaive build. This is a build for those of you who hate to have to manage sharpness. It's also quite an easy build to craft, while still being able to deal decent amounts of damage to a monster. So for this build you'll need the Kaiser Crown Beta, the Safi Crested Chest Alpha, the Safi Crested Van Braces Beta, Kaiser Coil Beta and the Safi Crested Boots Beta. I'm also using a Challenger Charm 5 and for my weapon I'm using the Safi Shatter Spear. For the awakened abilities on this weapon you must get the Teostra Technique and then afterwards it's down to personal preference. I've gone for sharpness increases and attack increases. As for the augmentations I've got a health regen augmentation and attack increase augmentation. Once again, the specialist tools are down to personal preference. So, when it comes to the jewels, you've got a few to play around with. So I've gone for Blast Jewels for the Blast Attack skill, Critical Jewels for Critical Boost, Vitality Jewels for Health Boost, a Shaver Jewel for the Clutch Claw Boost skill, Tenderizer Jewels for Weakness Exploit, a Flight Jewel for the Airborne skill, Expert Jewels for Critical Eye, and Throttle Jewels for the Latent Power skill. As for the jewels and the mantles, I've gone for more Expert Jewels. So if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have a raw attack of 961 with a decent chunk of purple sharpness. You have 50% base affinity, which can easily be 100% when you take into account both weakness exploit and latent power. You also have a blast rating of 310. Please note that the base affinity rating and blast rating shown here are with the Dragon Vein buff in effect, and you have the speed boost kinsec bonus. You also have a strong defense of 1037 that is strong against fire and thunder but unfortunately slightly weak to the other elements. So when it comes to the skills first of all you have critical eye at level 5. This can be potentially level 7 when you're wearing your specialist tools. Next up is latent power at level 5. This is a rarely used skill but it's useful for stamina based weapons such as the insect glaive, dual blades and bow. Basically after you've been fighting a monster for a set amount of time or you've taken enough hits and enough damage from a monster then the latent power buff will kick in for a small period granting us increased affinity as well as reduced stamina consumption. However, when using latent power in conjunction with the Dragon Vein Awakening set bonus or true Dragon Vein Awakening set bonus, it means that you can activate the latent power buff by just attacking a monster after a short amount of time thanks to the Dragon Vein Awakening actually damaging you. Anyway, you'll have Agitator at level 5, Blast Attack at level 4. Blast Attack is a skill that increases the blast rating and buildup of the ailment. You have Health Boost at level 3, Blight Resistance at level 3, Critical Boost at level 3, Weakness Exploit at level 3, Airborne at level 1, and Clutch Claw Boost at level 1. As for the set bonuses, you'll have two of them. First of all, you'll have Teostra's Technique, Master's Touch, which is a skill that prevents any sharpness loss should we crit a monster. That is why we've got an overkill 
with the affinity on this build. The affinity in all honesty on this build is like I said very overkill. Weakness exploit on top of the buff from agitator as well as the buffs you get from latent power. We've well gone over 100% affinity with this build but it guarantees that we see pretty much no sharpness loss regardless of if the monster is enraged, if we have latent power active, whatever. And having no sharpness loss is the main reason behind this build. Anyway, you also have the Sapi Jeeva Seal Dragon Vein Awakening, which is a milder version of the true Dragon Vein Awakening buff we talked about in the previous build. So it gives us increased base affinity and ailment rating for having our weapon drawn, but drains our health with each attack. But much like I said, the health drain is actually beneficial for this build as it allows us to activate the latent power buff during hunts without actually having to take a hit from a monster. So there you have it, as you can see this build is pretty much built for sustained damage and minimal sharpness loss. To be honest you should see next to no sharpness loss with this build. So this is a build for those players who really hate to have to manage their sharpness gauge. But there are pros and cons of course to every build. One of the biggest pros for this build is its damage output. It's decent enough, maybe not the strongest in the game but it's still a pro nonetheless. It has a lot of decent DPS skills combined with a ton of affinity based skills which means that you should be able to take on monsters quite effectively. On top of that, the next pro is that this build has no sharpness loss whatsoever, or it should have no sharpness loss. Thanks to Master's Touch and all the affinity based skills, it means that rarely will you have to stop and sharpen your weapon. And then finally for the pros is the Dragon Vein Awakening buff, which grants us increased base affinity and ailment rating for simply having our weapon drawn. But of course there are cons to every build. One of the biggest cons for this build is unfortunately we have to worry about a small health drain thanks to the Dragon Vein Awakening and the other con is that unfortunately this build is lacking when it comes to defensive and quality of life skills. But like I said this build is for people who hate to have to manage their sharpness gauge. A little side note which was excluded from the pro section is that this build is actually quite easy to craft so it could be something to aim for as you're making your way through Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Nonetheless, it's still considered by me an endgame build and is perfectly capable of doing pretty much any task in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Which brings us on to the fourth and final build which is the best of the best Gaiden Rans Insect Glaive build. This is a build very similar to the first build featured in this video but it's made to take on the Gaiden Rans, allowing you to farm it effectively and efficiently whilst yielding maximum loot and rewards. So, for this build you'll need the Brachidium Helm Beta, the Dragon Hide Alpha, Dragon Claws Beta, Dragon Barbs Beta, Dragon Feet Beta, and the Challenger Charm 5. I'm also using the True Fatalis Dias again, which has a health regen augmentation and attack increase augmentation. And as for the specialist tools, as always they're down to personal preference, so I've gone for Temporal and Rocksteady Mantles. Now when it comes to the jewels, again you've got a lot to play around with, however some of these are definitely mandatory when it comes to Guidance Land builds. So, first of all I've gone for Attack Jewels for the Attack Boost skill, Fortitude Jewel for the Fortify skill, Expert Jewels for Critical Eye, Shaver Jewel for the Clutch Claw Boost, Challenger Jewels to max out the Agitator skill, Handicraft Jewels for some extra sharpness, Evasion Jewels to max out Evade Window, Critical Jewels for Critical Boost, Protection Jewels for Divine Blessing, a Hard Geology Jewel for the Geologist skill, and Destroy Jewels for the Part Breaker skill. Finally, the Jewels on the Mantles are down to personal preference, so I've gone for Dragon Jewels again. So if you've done what I've done here, you have a build with 200 health and 200 stamina, regardless of if you've taken consumables or not. You have a raw attack of 1228 with a small chunk of purple sharpness. You have 15% base affinity, which can potentially be 85 when you take into account both the buff from Agitator as well as Weakness Exploit. You have a dragon rating of 120 with high Elder Seal, and you have spirit and strength boost kinsec bonuses. You also have a strong defense of 1111 that is strong against water and thunder, slightly weak to ice and fire but unfortunately very weak to dragon. So when it comes to the skills, as I said they'd be very similar to the first build featured in this video, so you have attack boost at level 7, critical eye at level 7, agitator at level 7, evade window at level 5, divine blessing at level 5, critical boost at level 3, weakness exploit at level 3, part breaker at level 3. Now part breaker is a skill that normally allows us to break monster body parts more easily. However, when it comes to the Gaiden Lands, it has an additional effect in that it allows us to break off the monster materials that we loot from the monsters in the endgame area more easily as well. You also have Geologist at level 3, which is again another useful skill for the Gaiden Lands. Geologist you really only need at level 1, but seeing as we got the jewel sockets, we may as well get it to level 3. Geologist allows us to loot the monster materials that we break from the monsters in the Gaiden Lands twice instead of once, at least from the high tier monsters. On top of that, it allows us to mine and pick up bones from the bone piles and mining nodes additional times, leading to more loot. Anyway, you have Handicraft at level 1, Fortify at level 1, Clutch Claw Boost at level 1, and then finally when you're wearing your mantles you'll have Dragon Attack at level 2. 
Finally, for the set bonus, you'll have the Fatalis Legend, Inheritance and Transcendence set bonuses, increasing our defense, offense and quality of life. So there you have it. As you can see, it's again a very strong all-round build that can take on pretty much any monster in the game. This makes it perfect for farming the Guidance Lands, especially when coupled with those essential Guidance Lands skills. But of course, every build has pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is this raw damage output, meaning that we can take on any monster in the game, regardless of their elemental or element resistances quite effectively. On top of that, the next pro is that this build has all the essential Guidance Lands skills you could want, including Part Breaker, Geologist, Fortifier and more, meaning that we'll come away with maximum loot when farming monsters in the end game area. And then finally for the pros is the Fatalis Legend set bonus, which grants this build multiple bonuses that increases our defense, quality of life and offense. But of course, there are cons to every build. One of the cons for this build is, unlike the first build, this build can potentially have sharpness issues. This is because we weren't able to invest a lot of points into handicraft. And on top of that, the other con for this build is that unfortunately, once again, this is a jewel heavy build, requiring some of the rarest jewels in the game, which is difficult for new players. But as I said, these are supposed to be the best of the best build, the end game builds to aim and strive for. So they could be considered difficult to craft at times. But if you're looking for an insect glaive build that can farm the end game area effectively and efficiently, I would strongly recommend aiming for this one. So there we have it, those are the best of the best builds for the insect glaive. Now these builds are aimed to be strong general builds, able to take on pretty much any task in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. But if you wanted to take on specific tougher monsters such as a Latrion or Fatalis, then some adjustments may be needed here and there. Also, these builds may be slightly different from other meta builds found in the community, but regardless, these are the strongest builds that I personally like to use in the game, and I hope they help you out in your hunts. So until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you the best of the best builds for the Insect Glaive in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.